of the Center for Inquiry in Los Angeles and the founder of the Independent Investigations Group, also in Los Angeles and in some other cities. Uh, the IIG does uh, testing and paranormal investigations and um, we work on lots of interesting things and offer a $100,000 prize for anyone who can prove paranormal ability. I think a lot of the people see the $100,000 prize and they think it's going to be easier to win than the million dollar prize. <laughs> So we get a lot of traffic. We probably get over 100 applicants a year, or at least two inquiries, and it, uh, it, it narrows down to very few people actually showing up. But that's another story. So uh, being in Los Angeles is a double-edged sword. Um, the good news is there's a lot of TV production happening there. It's a major media center, obviously, in America, and there's a lot of production of uh, other TV shows besides news shows. Uh, so that's good because we're on the scene, we're right there, we're easy for them to contact, they don't have to fly anyone in. Uh, the bad news is, it's Los Angeles. There's 10 billion things happening every day, and some of them are Brad Pitt, and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, it's tough for us to get onto the radar of the media as well, so uh, those are our, our challenges. So uh, here's what I'm going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about getting on. I'm going to talk about getting on the news, like the nightly news or in the newspaper. Um, uh, just do a, a basic media overview. Um, how to pitch stories. A little bit specific about how to pitch stories. Uh, what to do when you get on camera or in an interview. And then getting on TV shows themselves. Things that you'd see on the History Channel, the Learning Channel, those sorts of things. Uh, techniques to get your message across once you're on those shows, uh, pitfalls to watch out for, and there are lots of them, and uh, what's the bottom line, and I hope that won't sound too pessimistic when I get to that part. Uh, so I've been on lots of shows over the years. Um, out of all those shows that are flashing out there, there's some that, I, that, that aren't on there. Um, guess which one gave me the only real fair shake? <laughs> That's right, Penn and Teller's bullshit. Um, although, I would have to say that uh, Miracle Detectives, at least on the surface, was supposed to be two different approaches to a case. So that was, they, they gave me a pretty good shot. And that one up in the upper right-hand corner, you, don't, you probably can't see who that is on, on the left there. But that was a, I shot a TV series in Kiev, in the Ukraine, called Battle of the Psychics, <laughs> which aired in uh, the Ukraine and Israel and Russia. And it was this big competition between psychics. And that's Uri Geller on the left there. He's, he's like the, you know, the paranormal commentator and I'm the skeptical commentator, so yeah. Uh, oh, Hannity and Combs, why is that? Oh, that, no, it was, a, it, it was above that. Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, most of these shows were, were sort of in the minority there. Um, but I want to make one thing clear about the news. You know, we like to think of, you know, the news being somewhat accurate and uh, about the news and things like that. Um, let's be clear, the, the news is uh, a business. It's they sell airtime to people who pay for airtime and at the risk of sounding extremely cynical, um, if TV stations could air white noise and sell airtime for it, they would if they could make money because that's what they're about. Um, years ago, you know, when Walter Cronkite was at the top of the CBS News Bureau where they actually put a bunch of money into gathering the news and had professional reporters and journalists, uh, that might have been different. Uh, that is no longer the case. It's not uncommon for us in LA to see, as a part of the news story, uh, here's what's premiering tonight on ABC, embedded into the news. That is not a news story, but that's, what's, that's our reality right now. Uh, right now, the news consists of much more than three major or four major outlets, uh, TV outlets. You have full 24-hour news cycles. Um, 
internet news uh, and, and combinations, because Yahoo and some of these other ones, uh, Huffington Post as well, have big, giant video components of their uh, constant news cycle. So these are the people we also need to, to know about and be familiar with. Uh, like Sharon said, one of the best ways to do this is to get on consistently is to develop relationships with reporters. Um, once they know you and trust you, you make their jobs easier, so then you don't have to go out and hunt for someone to do your thing. They, you're their go-to person. You see this all the time on national television. There's the Middle Eastern ex expert, there's the science expert, there's the doctor who comes on. Uh, if you can be that in your local area, that's fantastic. Um, another way to get on that is a fairly new phenomenon in the world of television, and by new I mean in the last 10 or 15 years, I'd say, is uh, people shooting their own news pieces. They shoot slick, completely produced, self-contained news pieces. Uh, the government has done this, political parties have done this, uh, major corporations have done this, and they send the canned, complete news piece to the station, and all they have to do is run it, and it's not uncommon for them just to run something verbatim with just a little uh, comment over it. It does save them a lot of work, and if you can do something like that that's slick and looks good and sort of falls into their parameters, uh, that's a legitimate way to get on. Um, what most of us have to do is pitching stories uh, to reputable news sources. So, I mean, if you're going to go through all this trouble, at least try to get on something decent. Um, and I'll talk about how to do the pitches as well. Uh, but before you even get to the pitch, you need some kind of credentials. Uh, Sharon touched on it a little bit, but uh, they're not just going to be, they're not just going to call up some person. You, if they're going to put you on and they do lower thirds identifying you, you have to have some sort of reason that you're the person they're talking to. So maybe you know you have you're highly educated in some area. You've written a book or a series of articles. Uh, you're some sort of a specialist or expert in this thing. Uh, maybe you just run a skeptics group in, in smaller markets. If you have a legitimate known skeptics group, that's that's good enough. Uh, maybe your job share is a geologist. You know that she's a, a scientist. People who, uh, in the course of their regular job, have some abilities. Um, do not lie to them. Do not bullshit the media. I have heard this from uh, media contacts, Dan Gadol, uh, my friend from NBC, there is one of them. If you bullshit them and then and they find out about it, you're gone. You're blacklisted forever. Those people are never going to call you again. So you might want to, if you want to BS on a resume for your next job, that's fine. But don't tell the media you're something and then let them find out that's not really you.